Hey Dude, The 90s Call, with Christine Taylor and David Lasher. Hey dudes, welcome back to Hey Dude, The 90s Called. I'm Christine Taylor. And I'm David Lasher. And we have a great show for you today. David, do you want to tell our listeners a little about it? Um, I did a movie in 1996 called uh, White Squall that was based on a true story about a, a boat, a sailboat full of school kids uh, that went down in a freak storm. And uh, yeah, we have the, the most amazing lineup today. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I, I really, I want to just let you know ahead of time because you and your buddies are going to, I can't wait to hear every story, but I just want to just sit back as a fangirl and <laughs> And let you guys, it's like I'm I'm getting a panel of this. I mean, this is such a great slice of the 90s, but also such a good movie. And full disclosure, David, I really thought I had seen it. And when I went to watch it, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm like, I, I swear I saw this movie. And I realized I'd never seen it. And it's so good. So um, oh, what a great you. lineup. Yeah, I, this is exciting. I hadn't seen it in so many years, but Jill and I watch it. My wife, Jill, and I watch it uh, last night. and. Uh, Wow, it's powerful and it holds up and it's heartbreaking and uh, it's a true story. And uh, we have uh, Scott Wolf, Balthazar Getty, Jeremy Sisto, Ryan Philippe um, uh, to come on and we're going to recap. Exciting. So are we letting our first guest in? Yeah, let's get them on. Hey, guys. Hi. What's up, Ry? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. This was a nice little surprise. Oh my God. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am so thrilled. This is like epic to have to have all you guys even virtually uh, in, in the same place at one time. I think it's been probably since we finished the movie that we were all even seeing each other. Yeah, I mean, I've run into a lot of guys over the years just in passing, for sure. Yeah, but all of us together... Um, Let's start, I, I, I don't, I, you know, we usually start with the audition stuff, like, uh, but Ridley yeah. was, I, from what I remember, it was one quick audition, and then he was like, okay, go do your job. Well, what, where were you in your life, and what was your audition like? So I was probably one of the least experienced among us. You know, I had just turned 19, and I my only previous credit was the soap opera in, in New York, so I had never been on a film set never gone through a, like a stringent audition process where at one point they were reading me for Scott's role as well. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Did you, cause they were reading us for different yes. roles. At yes. Different we, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And oh. I was nervous as hell, man. Nervous as hell. Even, you know, by the time we started making the movie, I was, I was just nervous because I was so new to it. And I felt like everyone else was so much more experienced than I was. Yeah. Well, I, I want to get back to that because the scene where you're climbing the rope, just I remember it blowing my mind and thinking, wow, these guys came to play like for real. Funny, though, bringing up that scene in specific, because that was one of my character's big scenes. And, you know, it was me and Jeff face to face and he could see how green I was and how new, you know. And so I remember he took me down on the beach and drew out in the sand uh, a simulation of the of the ladder that we'd be climbing and we rehearsed the scene stepping in the sand as if it were each rung and he did that to get me comfortable oh and to kind of like get, yeah I mean he was really special to us I feel like oh in that like he kind of knew what what that period of time could be for us at that age and like was kind of mindful about making us recognize that yeah, he was one of us, man. I mean, he had a, a guitar or a camera in his hand at all times and was 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 hanging with us and really was a leader, but getting stoned with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, the dirt. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the story. So I already oh, said no. I'm going to just sort of fangirl out and sit back and let you guys have a reunion panel and then I can ask all the all the lady listener questions of course, that might pop of up. Lady, Lady listeners, listeners. want to know about the workout routines and <laughs> <laughs> who was the alpha male. There's a lot. <laughs> I just remember, I remember Ryan was really excited to get back to his workout. He's <laughs> like, I can't wait. To let this listeners, that's Jeremy go. Sisto who just joined us. What's up, Jeremy? Um, good to see you, man. Congrats wow. on the FBI show. That's amazing, dude. Thanks. I think yeah. we have Ethan also 
jumping on. E-Dog, what's what up? up? What are you guys doing? Oh, my God. Where are you, buddy? I'm over in Atlanta right now. You're working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working, doing a little, like a little reoccurring pop-in on a show out here. So um, I moved away as well. I'm I'm living in Atlanta now. Really? It's, it's really yeah. In the city, I like Atlanta. Atlanta's great. I got that Homestead Park there. That's really nice. I think it's a great city. Yeah, I like it too. It's really good. It's good to see That's you, gentlemen. Yeah, portion stuff. Um, so, uh, Jeremy, let's move to you. I, you know, I was talking to Ryan about his audition process and what he was doing at the time and, uh, that you as well came, you know, as much fun as we had and as tough as the conditions were and as off the rails as we almost went many times. I watched the movie last night with my wife and dude, the work holds up and, and, and I'm, you guys are a powerful group of actors that no matter what went on, the work was fucking solid. So what was your audition process like? Where were you or were at the time? What is it? What, what are your takeaways? What does the film mean to you? I mean, honestly, it was a weird time. I was young. I was 19. I, I, I was, I had no idea what I was doing. I, um, <laughs> I auditioned for the thing and I, I just came in. I did a scene where I wasn't, I didn't have any lines that, that kind of, Booked it. I think it was just one audition, and um, I always thought it was going to be the most amazing thing. And and uh, you know, I was coming off some other pro other films that I was. I just I was I was very burdened by the the, the opportunity, how great the opportunity was, and I was just certain I was going to ruin it all. So it was kind of it started out like a really fun experience, and and then it just got super intense, and I just was so hard on myself the whole time, and I you know and. Uh, I just felt um, so. It kind of has this weird tarnish that experience. There was some. There was definitely magic uh, around, but it was just. I was nineteen, and um, you know, just things were bubbling up from that I had gone through in my childhood that that I hadn't dealt with yet, and um, and you know, so I got to deal with those things traveling around the Caribbean, which is always. But all of that is such a mirror back. to your character, and to yeah. What I was thinking the same movie exact thing. And the, yep. his, his conflicted nature, and it's so interesting. Yeah, but I was almost, I, I don't know, I just felt, I mean, I can't even watch it. Just, I felt so tense. I wasn't able to, I didn't realize how to get myself to be uh, not self-conscious. And not to say that whatever I did there didn't work for some people, but it, I was just so self-conscious. I, I didn't realize how my brain worked and how I had to trick myself into being, uh, to not, that kind of that kind of weight and when those feeling you have all this time to sit around with the script and you have a few scenes and you're like no i'm gonna be <laughs> milking it and then all the production all the extras it's really scott there it's just i don't know how anyone like uh, you know is able to um you know but I, I, for me it was a very uh it was very stressful but it was uh it was also like i said a lot of a lot of magic yeah, I mean, I think it did work for your character, which I, you know, watching it last night, what a sad uh, family story you had on the side of this whole thing. Like, your father that was completely relentlessly uh, strict and, uh, you know, you had a whole nother storyline aside from uh, everything we were doing. Let me just recap for the listeners. White Squall is a true story about um, a, a ship of uh, a sailboat full of school kids. Uh, that were doing a semester at sea that ended up going down in a freakish storm. Um, and it was a book written by uh, one of the survivors, Chuck Geeg, um, and uh, and Ridley Scott made the film. And uh, we're just recapping now with uh, with our castmates. Ethan, tell me, uh, where were you uh, when when you auditioned for it? And, and what, what are your takeaways? What, what did the film like mean to you at the time? Well, I, you know, I kind of mirror part of what Sisto was saying with how young I was, I was the youngest out of you guys. You I think, I think I just turned yeah. 16. Wow. Yeah. You were um, young, dude. Yeah. Your mom like was there, mom right? Was yeah, yeah. 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 I got emancipated during the filming. So my mom could go like jump over to one of the other islands and leave me alone for a couple of weeks <laughs> under Balthazar's watchful <laughs> eye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I was young. I, of course, was very aware who Ridley was and the level, and and Jeff, obviously. Um, so very blessed with the opportunity, but also 
at first, you know, when you're the youngest in a crowd, uh, you're sort of um, self-conscious when you're showing up. Uh, but one of the things that thinking back, I hadn't thought of this in a long time, just listening to you guys talk, that first dinner um, that we all had together down there at the beach, I got lost on the flight over. I screwed up my flight. So I showed up a day late <laughs> and walked into the dinner that you guys were all sitting down at. And just immediately, it just, everything clicked with all of you guys, you know, it just, all of that fear went away. Uh, John Savage made me share his soup and I had never <laughs> shared soup with another person outside of my family. And I remember that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> Oh like straight my. from the bowl, or did you get your own? Spoon I got, I got my own spoon, but it's still, you know, I, I just okay. Yeah. <laughs> that and I learned, and, and with John I Savage too. That's because I remember we ate these all this bit, pasta in Malta, and and like if you drink Fernet Branca, it kind of like eases the uh, overeating sort of reaction in your body, and I, and that has stayed with me forever. I still use that. <laughs> Let's talk about Malta. You bring up Malta, and that's where we shot the. Um, the crash, the uh, the, yeah. the shipwreck. Yeah, and those tanks. In that tank, that the water. Remember when we learned like two weeks in, everybody was getting conjunctivitis, <laughs> and we're like, "Why is everybody getting sick?" And then they told us the pump to fill the the water tank. They built it right next to the sewage outpour of Malta. Yeah. yeah. Remember when we? Oh that? my yeah. God! I remember that. I got yeah. electrocuted in that sequence underwater. What? Yeah, the the part where I'm drowning and there's a light fixture in the same little uh, compartment that I was in, and I backed up against the light fixture and I got like a like a jolt underwater. It was really terrifying. Let me let me explain to the listeners and to Christine that bef when we were shooting the storm, we were in a, these tanks in Malta that backed up onto the sea. So when you the shot- The only one in the world. Yeah, when you shot a certain way, it looked like you were in the ocean. And the ship, I think, would go up 180 degrees. So like depending where we were in the storm, there were literally jet engines, from what I remember. So yep. we, we'd have fuel yep. caked all over us. There were wave machines, wind machines. It was like a freaking- Huge water slides, like 40, 40 metric tons or whatever that they dump onto us and this massive wave would come and hit you. I mean, it were there lifeguards and, yeah. and was there yeah. a lot of safety and supervision and rehearsal for it? <laughs> it was the 90s. It was I, the 90s. We were in a foreign country. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Under British British equity, we didn't have SAG yeah, protection. Equity. Nigel. Oh, Nigel. Nigel. Oh. We had to get certified what? as scuba or patty scuba diving. We had to get we had to take classes to get certified. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I remember there were scuba divers Divers in there during each take, like if something went wrong, I, I didn't know Ryan got electrocuted. Yeah. Jesus. Um, How far into the but, shoot yeah, that, was that sequence? Was that, did you shoot in order essentially? We, we started, Towards I think, ten, 10 weeks in the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. And we were, uh, you know, whether you were in the first scene or the last scene, you got on that boat at six in the morning yeah. and you were there all day. I, I remember like, trying to find a place to sleep, you know, uh, down in the bellows of the belly of the, the ship. Uh, but we were, we were all, we were together, you know, ev all day, every day for My six months. My favorite thing is those morning remember the, uh, the big rebellion of St. Vincent? Yes. When we were, uh, yeah. Where, yeah. Did you guys already <laughs> talk about this? No, tell us. Oh, that was a fun, yeah, that was the, that was a real bonding moment. We, um, so what happened? It was, uh, Ethan, it was your role had a, uh, an important thing when the Cubans boarded the ship, they were going to take you away, right? And then, um, uh, 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 who, which which character? The cook, right? The cook. Um, uh, Julio, the, yeah. Julio, yeah. yeah. Julio's character. Um, uh, I, I guess they had a conversation and it had, had been adjusted to his character being taken by the Cubans. And we and we were very upset for our, our new, new friend, Ethan Embry. And so we all banded together on the island of St. Vincent. And we uh, we marched over to where where Ridley Scott was eating dinner at his uh, <laughs> restaurant, and we all sat down nervously, uh, and we we pleaded our case, and and he his smile was only slightly condescending as he agreed to change it back because he thought it was such a 
a nice moment. He wanted us to bond and and have a uh, a feeling of accomplishment. And and so I think in the end it was kind of a half and half scenario. Is that right? Ethan forgot he lost his passport. Right. So this is yeah, the, the movie takes passport. place during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Right. Most of what I remember that day was just how far off that. I mean, everything's a blur. It's God twenty six. How many years ago? <laughs> <laughs> but just i remember how far we had sailed out that day like it was a particularly long journey to get out to the boat and like we were like right off the coast of south america basically you know um, i mean your character has a great moment where he runs downstairs and he's like i can't find my passport and like you you know you know shit's gonna go down i mean you got cubans on the boat uh military boat that was on the way to bay of pigs i haven't seen the film since we went to go see it at <laughs> disney uh they had a little screening for us I, at the disney lot I that's had, the last time i hadn't it. seen it in years but we watched it last night and uh i was telling the other guys and ryan uh that as as crazy as things got and as crazy as the conditions were you guys all came to work and the work holds up and the movie holds up. I and mean, I, we should all be proud of uh, that story. And, you know, let, let's talk about, you know, we had our, our counterparts who actually, you know, lived through this came down uh, to be with us, right? Including Captain Sheldon. Yeah. I remember being yeah. uh, really kind of in awe of him just because you build up, you know, the character had its own mythology and his own presence, but then, you see the real guy, and I remember being kind of blown away by that. You know, Chuck might have written the book, and they might have made the movie to kind of alleviate the burden that man must have felt. You know, like, you know, uh, Scott Wolf's speech to him at the end is like, this is on all of us. You know, it's not on you. And and to me, that the movie is like an ode to him, like, you're, 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 this is not your fault kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, so 10 weeks in the Caribbean. So it was St. Vincent, and then Saint it was, Lucia. then I think we had, we had a couple of days in St. Lucia. Was that the one where we had the fancy yeah. hotel with that? Yes, yeah, St. Lucia. Had our own little hotel. pool. <laughs> <Your own. laughs> Grenada. Fancy. Grenada. Yeah, we went to Grenada for a long time. Dude, the a... best beaches ever. The, I mean, those white sand beaches. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I still remember that. That's when the Danish girls came over. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. So we, we went many, many weeks without seeing a girl anywhere near our age yeah, and what, for it, many it was weeks. It like nine of us between the ages of 16 and 26. Yeah, I need to ask right, about right. that, about just the dude energy that was going on. Was there just, like, did you guys immediately bond or was there, like, were there people that annoyed each other? Were you all getting a little bit like, okay, enough, I, I, I need to see my thing. I think we were all so excited to be there. And so, you know, it was such... You, know, it, you don't have this kind of experience on movies that often, you know, really, where you go to, you know, what was it, eight different countries that we were in shooting this yeah. and, you know, at the age we all were. And so I think everyone was really in support of each other. There was maybe a little bit of like trying yeah. to outdo, like I remember cliff diving, <laughs> kept getting amped up into more and more features. Malta. Um, yeah. But uh, jumping off that pier. In I Malta. don't think there were yes. any issues like that, personality. It, it it was really it was it was similar to being in a fraternity yeah. at college, you know. For me, like these guys, we became brothers. We knew each other, you know, as well as you can get to know someone twenty four hours a day for six months. And we all had our, you know, our things. I mean, Balthazar was kind of like our leader, I think, as just as far as he he just was like more mature. Yeah, yeah, than that's all a of good us. way to put it. Um. <laughs> But we all, yeah. yeah. That word, um, it's a, it's the third definition under the word mature. <laughs> I think the big trash weed, yeah. bags of weed helped with the copacetic. <laughs> you know, we just, yeah, we, well, we're in the Caribbean and we realized how cheap it was, and we just bought so much. <laughs> we bought. So much. I brought an ounce with me. That's how young I was. I was like, I came to the Caribbean with weed taped to my ball. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and I got there, and I was like. <laughs> You didn't know oh, the yeah, Caribbean is where, like, yeah, no, the, the home of Bob Marley, dude. Because before the internet, you can't just Google stuff. Is there weed in right, the Caribbean? Right. 
Yeah, you guys all laughed at me, and you're like, we went to this shed last week and bought two pounds. Oh, the 16-year-old <laughs> in you. <laughs> I yeah, you just had to walk down to the beach. <laughs> yeah. But and, then yeah. We, and then after, I think it was uh, much sometime later, we had to continue trying to chase the waves, right? We didn't get the waves that we wanted. So after the shoot, yeah. then we had to go back, and we went to, what, Jamaica? And then we yeah. went to South Africa. Ooh. South and then Africa. after South Africa, was it after South Africa that we were coming back and we were in, in the, you know, the, the South Carolina. Oh, we, let's not talk. Yeah. Let's not talk about Buford, South didn't Carolina. Didn't we finish there? Isn't that where we, we finished? <laughs> that was the court, yeah. courtroom stuff. But wait, well, well, we, where, where were we coming from that we were sitting in the, in the, in the lounge at the airport on a stopover? Okay, hold on. You fit. guys, we went to Paris. Yeah, I convinced yeah, you. On a, on a whim. I was like, you guys, we have to go to Paris. And you were like, no, yep. I'm not going to Paris. I pushed it. I pushed it. I pushed it. We finally, so you said, yes, we get on the plane. And we but, been a long enough time don't. for us all to start being hung over by the time, like, we're on the plane. And then everyone was so <laughs> mad at me. And then we got there. And, uh, and and it was, like, kind of this amazing, like, three days, right? We slept in the we slept youth in hostel. And the youth hall, we slept on the street. Like, not you, David got yeah. a hotel room, right? I think I was the only one with a credit card. Christine, we were literally in the airport, I think, I don't know, in London, about to head home. And, and Jeremy was like, let's go to Paris. And Fuck we it. had them put it on the, the, the Disney account. Oh, yes, we went yes. Up And we said, Disney has changed our plans. And now we <laughs> have to go to Paris for three days. And this is before being online or anything. Like so like, okay, boom, first class uh, stopover in Paris. I remember yeah. getting the bill. Stop it. <laughs> Oh, really? No, they billed yeah. you? Yeah, they were like, you went to Paris on the Disney <laughs> Yeah. Guys, I think we tried to sleep on the lawn of the Louvre yeah. and got yeah, chased by did. dogs. And guns, French guns. They chased us out of there. Yeah, yeah. And they did chase us out of there. Yeah, we were, we were, that was awesome. We just walked around. They went to Jimmy Morrison's grave. We walked yes. around the city for three days. It was kind of epic. With Eric Cole, who thought he was Jim yeah. Morrison. Let me let me bring it back to the work. What what? Uh, let's start with Ryan. What was your impression of working with Ridley Scott, and and how did like what were your takeaways, and what did you learn? Well, from I was a huge fan of Blade Runner and Alien at the time. Like I was well aware of who he was, and in fact, like had to choose doing White Squall over another movie, and primarily did make that choice because of Ridley, because of how I wanted to learn from him. And wait, coming off a of soap opera, you got two movies at one time. Um, kind of, yeah, two offers at one time. You know. What it was, was the other one? Fear, the Ed Norton movie. Oh, um, yeah, it is a good one. But I, I did. I really sweet. wanted to work with Ridley Scott. So, um, yeah. And then you know, again, like maybe my inexperience helped me in some ways because, you know, it was a relatively big production, but I didn't know what to measure it against. You know, so like to me, I was just like, oh, this is how it is. It, you know, and then come to find out, like very few productions are are that size really over the course of a career, but. Uh, Right. And I had never traveled, man. I, w I was at the point, the time we made the movie, I was like broke, broke. I had no money and I had never really been outside of the U.S., you know. So for me, like there was so much to take in and so much stimulation. And, you know, I, I grew up in a house with, with three sisters and I always wanted brothers. And it's like all of a sudden I was right. transported into this group of, of guys. And I really hadn't had that kind of bonding on that in that way before. And so, you know, I, I, th th that, those aspects really impacted me. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, Ridley, I feel like, you know, because we just did a, 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 a Brady Bunch movie uh, cast reunion last week. And th these poor actors had like 10 auditions, a nationwide talent search and the, the crazy horror stories. And I, I remember Ridley just one audition. He saw what you could do. And then he barely gave us notes. Right. He would come over and go a little less or a little more. But he he basically hired you to do your job. Yeah, and I've found like with yeah. the, the great ones I've worked with, that's kind of how they are. Like Eastwood's very minimal as, as a director. Altman was as well. Like I think they cast who they know can do what they need. Right. And then kind of, unless there's something egregious, they're not really going to get in the way of that. So the way he, because he operated a lot too on that movie. That's right. So he's behind the camera and he's got his cigar sitting right there on the... <laughs> 
on the tripod or his his focus polar is holding it while he's shooting so he's looking through the camera and back in the 90s if you wanted to see what you were getting that's how you had to do it we did not have good monitors right so you had to get behind the camera to see what was getting caught yeah i remember we all thought it was i remember funny. so he was right there we all the whole thought it was time. funny that our dp's yes. name was hugh johnson hugh johnson uh, Hugh Johnson. <laughs> and do you remember remember Terry? The first AD yeah. was a fucking badass yeah, dude. Yeah, he was yeah. cool. He's cool. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, there was a moment where where uh, I think it was in the scene when I was um, uh, pointing that the thing at Ethan's head, and and anyway, he, uh, really jumped in there before we shot, and he was moving around um, some stuff like a fishing wire or something was hanging through the screen, and he was tying something onto it so it would be more visually interesting or whatever and uh and he turns to me and he says they don't teach you that in film school <laughs> except, <laughs> except and i still say that too when somebody does something cool like that and on a set i remember the drawings he would mm. make like when, you know on the yeah. plane rides or what I, 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 they were like the most beautiful storyboards that he did with his hand and i was I, I remember thinking this guy's next level like he sees it shot by shot. Ethan, what was your takeaway from from working with Ridley? I mean, it's all that stuff that you're that you guys are talking about, like the 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 details that he notices, the freedom that he gives people. Right, he casts you just, for a reason, right? Yeah, he casts you for a reason, and even beyond casting, it just seems like he loves telling stories too he loves the the communal atmosphere of filmmaking watching the film like i couldn't even believe the scale and what you had to do like i cannot even imagine i'm always curious to hear how the behind the scenes is in in those moments like what what was the vibe Were, was there panic was it calm and controlled well terry that's a lot about terry man he's you know first ad holds it down and i he i just remember his Kind of just had a weight to him, but it's such a uh, a, a modest uh, dude, a humble dude, and that, that uh, you know, as a first AD, that's what you have to be. You're bearing the brunt of it. You're not getting the uh, the uh, uh, the credit for a lot of it, uh, but you're holding it all together. And I I do remember that feeling like he was the one where um, if he was gone, the thing would have fallen apart. Yeah, he was the but general. These, yeah, there but there were like numerous generals because you had him, you had Ridley. You had Jeff as our general, and yeah. none of them seemed to throw a wrench in the plan, except for Nigel, but he, you know, <laughs> he's just because he's British. Um, <laughs> remember we threw him in the tank on yeah, 4th of I July? <laughs> I mean, I think also those yeah. big set uh, pieces are Ridley's wheelhouse, and maybe in truth, one of the reasons why he did the movie was because he knew he was going to get to do this big action sequence with the boat sinking. And our first day of shooting when we're all pale, and the first half of the scene, everyone's really pale, and the second half of the scene, everyone is bright red, and it's within... They just walk yeah. to the back of the boat in the same time sequence and every skin color. <laughs> and also remember the first mate, James Marsden, got seasick. And so did Scott Wolf. And they literally turned green. Like, I'd never seen somebody's skin actually turn green. And they did. Nobody <laughs> else got seasick? Ryan, this Marsden. is... Because that was... So oh, wait, no, you guys, you remember Cape Town? Cape Town, South Africa. This is... So, Christine, we got we got finished with the, the shoe. We wrapped. And then a month later or something like that, we all got a call saying Ridley doesn't think the seas look rough enough. So we're either going to Greenland or to Cape Town, the roughest seas oh, in the world, in the middle God. of winter. Because the Cape of Good Hope and is where two oceans meet, so you're guaranteed to have really kind of turbulent waters there. We were throwing up all day, every day, from oh, what I read. And I never get seasick. But I was fine. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? I don't, I don't have motion issues. A lot of other Dude, they were, I think, 50 foot swells there every day. It was intense. It was terrifying. And the whales, Dude, I remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The remember the whale that waved in. to us yeah. as we left to the airport? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, I do, because I had taken a lot of acid. <laughs> and it, it was <laughs> remember how, how uh, Marsden would, would never drink or party with anybody. And I saw yeah. him, we ran into him a few years later. He was all smoking. He's like, ah. Now I've, I've eventually caught up with you guys. <laughs> oh my God! He wore Mickey Mouse underwear, uh, pajamas. He was couldn't have been more different. Balthazar, what's up? What's up, guys? We got Balthazar Getty you? on here. Hi, hey guys. What's Phil. up, brother? How, How are, are you? Congrats on the new album, man. Thank you. 
Appreciate it. Yeah, the music's awesome, dude. Thank you. Hey, Jeremy. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. So we just to catch you up, uh, we, we all kind of talked about like where we were when we got the movie, what the audition was like, and what our takeaways were uh, from, you know, if you could chime in, what were you doing at the time? I know you had done Lord of the Flies, but uh, what was your audition like and what did the movie getting it mean to you? Yeah, I think I remember being at Ridley's office over in West Hollywood. And I think he was having guys read different parts. It wasn't specifically for a part, if I recall it correctly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just sort of remember going kind of in and out, being called back, sort of him not knowing exactly what what role was going to go where. And um, and I remember, yeah, seeing some, weren't we all kind of together over there? Didn't we kind of bump into yes. each other over over? Over at the office, like chemistry reads one day yep. where yeah they were pairing us up with different guys. It it was and you know we all grew up in the business and you know there was always those certain projects where if you were around the same age and you know a similar type of look or whatever we we were all chasing these projects you know and this was very much the movie for for guys our age to 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 try to be a part of you know. But this was this was how old were we? I mean, this was quite a ways after. I mean, I Lord of the Flies. I was thirteen, fourteen. This, how I old were 19. we? When, when I was nineteen, I'm forty eight now. But yeah, Balthazar, like we were talking about how you know Ridley's, uh, you know, he casts you for a reason, and then he really there's very little notes. I mean, but you know, I, I my wife and I watched the movie last night, and just like your character, you know. The work holds up and I'm so proud of of the film and I'm proud of you, the work that we all did. But, you know, your character has these moments where, you know, Jeff Bridges fixes your tie and you go, thanks, dad. Or you have your glasses upside down on the, you know, when we're drinking and you get a venereal disease and have a full on ass shot, you know. And like, I feel like Ridley (laughs) cast us all because of who we were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was fun for me because the guy looked a lot different than I looked. You know, he was kind of nerdier in the glasses. And, you know, I've, I and still to this day, you know, I, I love to I love to create characters and, and create their looks and then kind of go backwards, um, backwards from there. And I, I mean, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. I mean, but the fact that we basically head out and we headed out in the morning and we got on this. Yep. This boat. And, you know, I mean, there was, was all yeah, day, no dressing rooms, no bathrooms, no, no, no accommodations, no, no nothing. Um, You know, I'm not sure. Yeah, find a spot to sleep. Yeah, and if you weren't in a scene, think, you were yeah. still on the boat. It's not like you got to leave the boat. Right. And there's no cell phones, nothing to distract yourself with. Do you remember how they would, they would boat out our food every day? And do you remember that we got suspicious yeah. that they weren't yes. giving us fresh food? You remember that, fault? And I think that you put a marker on one of the pieces of chicken, and they came back the next day. <laughs> um, Balthazar, before you joined behind the scenes, uh, David said that you seemed like the most mature of all the guys. And um, Jeremy, maybe you were disagreeing. No, I was no, saying I said well, through a definition of mature in the dictionary. No, right. What I said was if there was a leader of the group, it was Balti. Yeah, I mean I was definitely a, a major knucklehead, but um <laughs> yeah, I mean I had because I'd started so young, I you know, I had some more set experience and stuff like that and and but we were all leaders in all our different crews and then we would all sort of uh, uh, of interact and yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's some wild, wild stories. Um, but I mean, I look back and, uh, I just think of all the, all the great times, you know, I mean, it was, it was such a fun, fun, unique, um, experience. And, yeah. Uh, so I just remember so many laughs, man. I mean, just yeah. like literally just, we were just giving it to each other and freaking enjoying it. I mean, really taking it in. What was the training? Like, did you guys have to literally learn all of these sort of, you know, the, the, the nautical way of life? Or were you just learning as you went? I mean, was there, 
you know, a set period of time where it's like, okay, we're getting on the boat and we're going to teach you guys how to do all of this stuff for real. Or was it as you went along? Yeah, they had, they had, uh, uh, you know, real sailors on the ship and tech advisors that would teach us how to do a nod and how to pull the main sails and all that stuff. We did have a yeah. couple of, of, I don't know if it was full days of rehearsing. I, actually it was, it was like a couple different four hour periods where we did like some sailing school. Right. Climbing up the rigging yeah. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like a really old sailboat with square rigging that's, that doesn't even really exist today. But yeah, they taught yeah. us how to. I remember one training day and we had, um, we had like uh, sailors with us. Remember the Australian guy? I don't know if they were, they were the ones that were taking the boat around or if they were just there for, uh, for consultant stuff. You remember who I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. And then we also what? had like two British kids that were part of the school school group that right. they were like sailor kids. I remember the guy I was playing, I think was there. Right. Um, we had a couple of the actual, yeah. didn't we? We had a couple. Yes, of your guy was there. Chuck, uh, Chuck Geeg was there. And yeah. I think Captain Sheldon yeah. came yeah. too. It's not very often, you you know, you do, especially a somewhat period piece like this, and then you're actually with the, with the people, you know. Remember yeah. we did some some uh, like improv thing, and maybe it was my room. It was like early on in St. Vincent, and uh, it didn't I, last very long because we didn't know what to oh, do. Oh yeah, I <laughs> but we were like we were like playing the '60s music, and we were like trying to be in character. Right. I think it got I, awkward fairly quick. <laughs> I do when, remember that. When the girls showed up after so many weeks of not seeing girls, I don't know, Ryan, are you comfortable oh, talking yeah. about, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, Ryan ended up dating uh, Ridley's daughter, like seriously. Yeah, yeah, we were together for about two years almost, and I met her during the shooting, and she, yeah, she was one of the Danish school girls, um, and yeah, I was really smitten uh, pretty, pretty quickly. She was so cool. A really great girl. And I think Scotty Wolf hooked up with that blonde oh, chick. He did. That oh, he did. <laughs> the first place we stayed, we were sort of in this kind of average hotel, but right across from us was an island with <laughs> with a nicer hotel where Ridley was with his... <laughs> yeah, remember I that? Remember, I do remember yeah. that. At St. Vincent's, right? Yeah. Sorry, we, Dan, we got to go, go over there one night, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We organized a boat, and we all went over after dinner, and then we started doing this like spiritual chanting. Do you remember this? We're all like at the top of Je Jeff was there, yeah. and Ridley, yeah. and then Ethan said something funny, and we all laughed. Yeah. <laughs> a long time ago, some other stuff happened too. But, uh... Malta just seemed to go on forever. I, I, I don't even know how many weeks. It was maybe two and a half months there? Or what? Um, no, it was about, a, I think, a, like a month. And we all kind of started, it started to go off the rails there from a behavior standpoint. I, think. <laughs> I also remember yeah. hanging off the side of the hotel on acid one night. Christine, there are stories that we just can't tell. But uh, <laughs> we, we, you know, we were early 20s doing what guys, you know, should yeah, because everybody takes acid and hangs off buildings in Malta. <laughs> oh, teenage relatable. boys. Very relatable. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll say. Oh, my gosh. You guys oh, crazy. my gosh. Crazy, man. There he is. Jeff Bridges came on. What's Ooh, up, dude? Hey, look at the dude. Jeff, congrats on your Lifetime Achievement Award. That Thank was incredible. You, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Look! That look at you! Incredible. Look at you guys! I I uh, reviewed our movie uh, last night. I didn't get to the white squall part, you know, the big, but uh, you know, it's they're like home movies, yeah. you know, right? You're well, Jeff, you fun. had you had a camera. You know, you're a renowned photographer, and Christine, he gave us the most beautiful book of photos at the end of the shoot, and you, you use a very unique camera, right? A wide lux, yeah. You still doing that, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I'm. You know, I'm more into uh, kind of mining the stuff I've already done, and kind of you know, I we had a great uh, exhibit uh, oh, yeah. in Montana with my wife's stuff too. So we're kind of doing team exhibits now, and I'm enjoying that. But uh, gee, if I would have gotten my uh, act together here, I would have uh, been able to present some show some of those pictures because that's brings back all the 
Feeling. Yeah, I Jeff, I have the book, and we will be posting some of. Those I just, photos. I just, I just, oh, good, oh, you can post them on there. Oh, yeah, good. on our social media. Yeah. Because I was thinking, uh, I was remembering all of us swimming in that big uh, tank in Malta, oh and then we would all have to because there was a broken sewer line. Yes, Ethan just and, that and we'd all have to get in that, that and we'd have to get in that inflatable uh, pool. Yeah, we got eye infection. Clorox, man, every after every <laughs> tank. You it remember was that? Shit? It was really yeah. hectic. Uh, and then didn't we push uh, some guy in that pool? You know, the guy Nigel. who was the, our pay guy. <laughs> we had some not... adventures so and i remember just speaking about that malta thing man i was talking to my stunt guy you know vince dedrick and if you remember the white squall which uh didn't act, i got to uh talk to the captain who i portrayed before he died and he said it wasn't a big storm or anything he said it was just totally calm and then it was as if God reached down and he said, he said this, took the mainsail and just put it underwater. There was no storm. Isn't that mm -hmm. wild? But wow. we, but when we were shooting it, we're in this tank and there's water slides and jet, uh, jet engines, jet engines to blow. Yep. And it was, a, and there was the opening thing was going to be like about a 10 minute take, you know, full, you know, I don't know if they were shooting digital. No, no it was film. You only had as big a mag as you could take, a 10-minute take or something. And our assignment was to go out there and rescue each other, you know. And, yeah. Uh, and and, I, and I, 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 was, I was talking to Vince, the stunt guy. I said, no, we've got to have a sign. If any of us gets in trouble, we get a sign. And he says, well, the traditional sign for danger is a fist in the air, thrust like this, you know, as high as you can. And I said, okay, that's our signal. Now, we go, action. Swimming towards our boat that's flipped over. And uh, it's not my, my strength. Is not, it's the jet fuel. Do you remember all of that jet? Yeah, they, we'd they be caked with yeah, jet oh, fuel. Yeah, they faces. couldn't they couldn't turn the engines down, you know, because they couldn't have them full blast. So there was all this jet fuel in there. And I couldn't breathe. And I said, oh, shit, I'm going down, man. And my feet magically oh my hits a, a, a cable that's under there. And I'm able to raise out of the water about up to my waist. And I go, ah! and I put my hand up like that. And I look at the guys. And they all go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, good job. That's a sign for help. Oh, man. I mean, God, it was dangerous. Do you remember that, man? Did that affect you that way with the gas and the? Yeah, air? and especially the smell and taste of it. I can't. I, I can still recall that. Oh. I can still recall after that. after work, sometimes we'd hang out with with you, Jeff, and play. You'd play your guitar. guitar yeah. yeah, dude, yeah, with with out. jet fuel all oh, over you. Oh God, yeah, well, or Clorox, you know that <laughs> Clorox smell. And then do you remember Malta? What a trip, man. No trees, right? It was all gone by the Middle Ages. Nothing in all but the West. limestone. And, and did you visit that place, supposedly the earliest human inhabitant? I've only learned about this afterwards. I wow. wish we would have known. There's all these incredible uh, finds in Malta. Oh, some of the earliest oh of man. Yeah, right. Well, the history of the place is that it was conquered by a lot of different people, right? So they built roads that were really easy to escape, really narrow, and it, narrow roads. There and was also used... a lot of homeless cats, and there was a really cool guy. I can't remember where he was from, maybe Spain, or maybe he was Maltese, but he'd ride up on his motorcycle, he'd take his helmet off, and hundreds of cats would come streaming out. <laughs> oh, the cats. He'd feed them, he would, uh, you know, wipe antibiotic stuff on their 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 wounds and stuff. He was He was really cool. And it used to be connected to the mainland, you know? Of Sicily, you know, that's how people. Right. That's how the people got over there to build those things so early. Is that it was connected, you know? Yeah, guys, do do did we appreciate how good the food was? I mean, oh. I, every night dinner was, our you know, we would just run to a place and it was you know incredible mm -hmm. Southern Italian food. I remember yeah. that place that Ridley took us. We went there a few times. You remember that place? It was like right on the. It felt like a bay. Yeah, on the water. The water there. Yeah, we shot we shot 
in Malta, did we shoot in Cape Town? Did we shoot there at all? Yeah, briefly. Yeah, right. briefly. yeah. and then we shot it around the Bahamas. Remember Young's Island and uh, yeah. the, uh, you know. Yeah, St. Vincent, Vincent, Grenada. Saint Vin yeah. Lucia. Wow. South Carolina. Lucia. We weren't in Jamaica, right? Oh, St. Lu Lucia. No, I don't think so. St. Lucia, though, that was beautiful. And then it? South Africa. Beaufort, yeah, yeah. South Carolina. You know, God, those those shots uh that you know that ridley did uh of the of our ship man god that looks so beautiful huh i mean that that i was it was funny we were making that movie just after water world <laughs> and remember the fiasco <laughs> that everybody said oh no we're gonna shoot on the water and ri with ridley it was like a piece of yeah. cake i had a great experience in saint vincent i remember i was i would leave the hotel and just walk into town up hills and i made friends with this group of kids that they lived in situations that were would look very poor to us and and but they did this great thing they would they would go and 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 they would ask um tourists to give the to buy them string and they would go and out of garbage bags and sticks they would make these kites and they would go up to this hill and they all flew these kites it was a competitive wow. sport out in the world and i mean these were some hungry kids but boy they were uh they they were really uh in, inspiring it, wow. the caribbean people wow. are the best this the the happiest people on earth but they're slow as fuck right do you remember how long <laughs> dinner take like three hours in that's the caribbean right yes that's right um, time was no, all no, no. jeff we were all talking about how you know like uh balthazar had his uh the guy that he was playing come down you had oh. uh, scott had chuck gee come oh. you had captain sheldon come and it you know, Abby, I watched the movie last night with my wife, and I was thinking, why did Chuck Key write this book, and why did they make this movie? And it really felt oh, like man. trying to alleviate the burden from this man. Oh, well, well, did we, you feel responsibility to tell his story? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, so I hung out with him a bit, you know, and uh, he told me some really fascinating things. One of the things he told me was, unlike the film, there was no button to the tragedy. You know, there was no court case and all of that. Yeah. It was, uh, he didn't get uh, fined or anything. It was in, in, you know, these international waters where those rules aren't, don't apply. And it was an accident. And he spent a week with each of the uh, family members of the, uh, of the guys who died. Did he and feel? That, did you feel like he felt responsible? Like, did no, he carry that? No, 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 no. <laughs> he did not at all. That's all showbiz story, you know. But the wild thing, you know, is that uh, these guys, you know, that's a tragedy they went through, man. Yeah, and we don't like yeah. to face our tragedies. We don't. We just. We avoid it. We just invent some another story that we're telling of our lives. Too painful. Why go there? So they didn't talk to each other for 30 years, man. Oh, that's right. And then Todd Robinson, the guy who wrote the, the our show, yeah. he uh, was fascinated by, you know, started to explore this area. And he brought Chuck Gig into, you know, started to talk to him. And uh, he said, no, we ne never met these guys. And then they brought, uh, your character Balthazar, right? Yeah, wasn't that the guy they brought in? The yeah, th that real guy. And there was was there one other real guy? Uh, but to have sure. you know, as actors, you guys know to have real guys on board. Oh man, what a yeah. gift, right? Yeah, pretty. And unique. I remember, uh, as I said, there was no button on the on the real story, but I remember when we were shooting that courtroom scene. And the guy who you were playing, Balthazar, comes up to me and he's on the verge of tears and he's crying, you know. And I said, what's what's going on? And he's playing your father in the movie, right? Right. Yeah. And Balthazar's character, of course, is blamed for being at the wheel and fucking up somehow. And, it, and in real life, uh, your, your character... Uh, comes up and says i you know he says i want to do something i'm i'm moved i said what he says i want to i want to i want to hold myself embrace myself 
as, oh as and I, he says, can I do that? I said, go, go ask the boss, you know, go ask Ridley. And Ridley, of course, said yes. So you can imagine our movie was a not only was it a you know a movie that people could see and, and value how they do, but it was an experience for these guys 30 years after this event to have some kind of digestion of it. You know, God. Guys, we got Scott Wolf. We got hey, Scott Wolf. All right. hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> Fashionably late. You're tardy, oh, Wolf. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How is everybody? Good. We're great, man. Great to see you. How are you? I'm really great. I'm really great. Um, that was a, uh, a a calendar mishap. Um, uh-huh. No excuses. What was your name in the what was, your, what was your name in the movie? I forget. Uh, what were you? Geek. Geek. Chuck Geek. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the guy. Geek. The guy who no wrote the book. Geek. Yeah, of course. No excuses, Geek. Did you uh, hang out? Did you hang out with Chuck much? You know, I did. I did get a chance to hang out with him a bit. Um, you know, every time he was with us on set, I know he was with us in South Carolina. And uh, yeah, I got a chance to have him, you know, talk to me firsthand about some of the experiences they had and, and obviously just tried to soak up some of his energy. He was a real sweetheart and obviously meant the world to him that we were telling. The oh, story. wasn't it something? Yeah, I was just saying before you got on that uh, to have a, 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 a crescendo or, or some kind of finish to that terrible thing that they went through in real life there was no courtroom scene you know there was none of that it was just kind of you know stayed away from each other didn't try to avoid this thing that happened to them and that, but that I think courtroom, that the- you remember the courtroom how vibed it was having those guys in there intense oh god but I feel like the movie was uh, was was for Captain Sheldon to alleviate the uh, the burden that that man must have carried. And then Scott, you know, your speech at the end to Jeff, like, you know, this is on all of us. You know, mm-hmm. this is not just yours to carry. To me, that's that that was why the movie was made. It was a beautiful yeah. scene. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great scene. And yeah, that definitely carried a lot of the ethos, I think, of why it mattered so much for them to tell the story. Um, And they were all clearly burdened by it. You know, Chuck had a very sort of introverted way about him. So, you know, you could only see it in these fleeting moments where we talk. But, you know, you could still see after all these years, the weight that um, the experience still had for them. And the and the gift, really, that the film was mm-hmm. uh, for. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's certain scenes I just want to point out. Uh, when when Scott is looking at Ryan through that door, and you realize that you can't, you're not going to get him out. And mm-hmm. Ryan has this look that he just he knows he's going down. It's heartbreaking. I mean, it's hard to watch. It's really fucking tragic. I haven't got really to, I haven't and- got to that part yet, man. <laughs> no, 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 Jeff, I Jeff, finish the movie. The moment, the moment where Jeff <laughs> sees yeah. his wife, like that no. moment, dude, oh, that was God. just. No, I mean, no, it, holy he, moly! Remember how cool Ridley was as far as drawing? You know, he, I said, "What's going to be like?" He's kind of like this. And, and he just draw like that. You we just that? talked about that. Oh, His yeah. little drawing oh, scribbles oh, were God. like next level stuff. Oh God! He saw the movie shot by shot. Where was the scene when you guys all climbed the hill to sign? Oh yeah. Well, that's a beautiful yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. That was Saint mm-hmm. Vincent. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, a it volcano, a, a volcanic crater at the top yeah. of. Uh, do you guys remember the running down that hill? Yeah. That that yes. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> faster well because yeah well because ridley set his camera up on one side of this crater and he was like send the boys over there and so was it darren the ad like he walks us all the way across and when you get across this really beautiful grassy like bucolic little hill has re- re- revealed itself to actually be like hunks of volcanic rock covered by like some very light 
green weeds. And we're looking down there and I turned to this guy, Darren, and I was like, does, <laughs> does really want us to run down this hill? And <laughs> just as I asked the question, you hear, send Action. the boys, send oh, the boys. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. And Darren ducks, and we just turn and run. And what's and, uh, that? What's under those weeds, man? Dude, holes. It was like every step was like one of life's great miracles that your foot landed without killing you. And I, I was looking to my right and left and seeing like we were oh. all, I think, equally terrified. But I hit a bad rock. Uh, oh no! The lava. <sighs> and launched forward uh, ah! with like two steps to go. It was treacherous. And thank treacherous. God it was treacherous. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I remember cutting myself and, and the Australian sailors, whoever was with us was like, oh yeah, you're gonna get some sea ulcers there. And uh, I still have scars, you know, cause the, oh. the water was so warm and there was bacteria in it. It's amazing we all survived yeah, that shit, to be honest. I, I wasn't there. I, I remember I, I wanted to, I think they thought they were going to be able to take me up to the, uh, my character had already been kicked off the boat. And uh, and then at the last minute they couldn't, but I had gone to the other side of the island. So I walked through the neighborhood. But when you came back, you you had, had all your makeup on, your your black face paint. And I was I was impressed by how, um, how, how well the designs on your face really kind of represented how I saw your characters, I, your characters. And, um, and then I, I, I really, I learned that you guys all did it yourself. So that was, I thought that was really impressive. And, and also just, uh, it showed how well you knew who you were playing. Yeah. I love Scott's line. Uh, I finally understand Homer. The journey's the thing. I, I, I watched it last night, but to me, that's another, just beautiful message. That's why these guys were there, you know. And we did so much dangerous um, stuff when on our days off and our our time off, from like cliff diving to I mean, so many things that you should not be doing while you're filming a movie. Oh God, I mean, honestly, there's so <laughs> much we can't. Yeah, there's so much we can't say. But Scott Wolf, I will say, where's my crawler? And let's <laughs> let's let's find a group of cats to talk to for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Those are from the Malta sessions. Yeah. yeah that's oh, when yeah. Sort of went off the rails a little bit from the behavior standpoint. Off the fucking rails. Now they're speaking the in code. Jeff is even fully aware of where us, where we all went. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone talked about the tank? Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Scott, give, it, yeah, give us your take. About the rubber pool we had to get in filled with Clorox after we... <laughs> yeah. Oh, each well, day. The, the first day, uh, so the first day it was Eric. Eric, uh, Eric uh, was the only person. Eric Michael Cole was the only one in the wa in the tank water the first day, and so the rest of us came down for day day two in the tank, and Eric kind of was like finding his way <laughs> towards the van, and oh, his no. eyes were oh, just no. glued <laughs> shut with muck. Yep. Oh, <laughs> he couldn't God. open his eyes. His it was jet nose. fuel. And yeah, and we were like, turned around and looked at him, and it was like, it was like, what happened to you? He was like, I think it was the tank. <laughs> and then the yeah. other, the other, the other crazy thing that happened was when, um, because Ridley had all these jet engines uh, firing at us and wave machines, and created that remarkable storm. Um, but there was there was one day where they, you know, he he he, he they wanted more and more and more. And we were trying to swim back towards the, the ship and just getting, I was next to you, Jeff. And uh, I think uh, maybe Ethan was on my left and we couldn't swim anymore. Cause you were just getting this like jet you fuel. In your yeah. Inhaling that yeah. jet fuel. I would, I yeah. told that story before you got on Scott oh, of I did. magically found a table under the thing and I rose up to my waist and I made the international symbol for help and I looked yes. over at all the guys that we agreed on that would be the sign and they all look at me and go yeah <laughs> <laughs> way to go Jeff you almost nobody, died nobody wanted to ruin the shot right no, you know. no. oh god Jeff did, you, Jeff did you have to get certified too like we did for scuba diving to do it or were you already <sighs> I was already certified, I believe. I don't know if it was up to date, but with Sea Hunt, yeah. you know, my dad's show in the 60s, we did a lot of scuba diving. Oh, my God. Did you guys ever feel like, I mean, Jeff said he, he 
he felt in danger. But did you guys ever feel like uh, there was like shit was going to go down? Oh yeah. Well, I told you I got yeah. electrocuted. I, that that. Right, Ryan got a little. Oh, in I tank. remember that. Yeah. Oh God. That was, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Talk about yeah. that. How did that happen, yeah. man? Because there was a light fixture in the <laughs> compartment where my Holy character's shit. sinking under the water, and I backed up against it and got. A... Oh. A and you would think that you know, why didn't you? Why didn't it just fry you? Like you know, dropping a fan into the bathtub or. Must something. have been very minimal God. voltage. Low voltage. God, oh me, yeah, there you go. God. I mean, thank God. Jeff, what was your opinion of us group of, you know, re- crazy young guys? Like you were no. such a example, it's such a leader for us. We were all talking before you got on, but what what was your impression of us cuz we were we were out of our minds, but the work looks it holds up. How old are you guys now? 48. I'm 50. 48, so 50 and I'm 73. So I'm, you know, got about 20 years on you guys, something like so that. So you were younger than us during that shoot. I used Jeff yeah, I guess as so. a marker of time for many years. I'm yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it's weird. I do that with I do that with movies. But I remember you guys thinking, oh yeah, I I can imagine being you guys. You know how time goes so fast. I mean, yeah. even at 50, you know, 20 years ago, you're 30. Oh, you can imagine that. It goes so fast. So I remember thinking, oh, those guys, you know, they're doing everything that's available and good for them. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I wish I was a little younger and could have ridden with you, but I don't think I did that much. Did I ride with you? Do you Dude, remember? Dude, you came to dinner with us. You sat oh, yeah, there with the guitar. I can't remember that shit. I don't know if it's COVID or old age or what, but my memory. No, we sat on the beach. Hey, we sat on the beach and you played guitar and we all smoked a little. Oh, see, it's hard. Oh, yo, I see. It. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me some more stuff because I can't remember. Ryan, tell Jeff the story about the, the climbing the ladder scene that well, he rehearsed. So I was you. one of the least experienced on the movie and I was super nervous and I was intimidated by you because you were a hero of mine still are and I remember we we were it was in we were about to shoot that climbing the rope scene and you could tell how nervous I was and so you took me down on the beach and you drew out a simulation of the rope on uh, in the sand and we would rehearse the signs and move forward as if we were climbing the rope and it just put me it was so generous and it put me in, in such a, a place of being able to actually do the scene and not feel in, as intimidated or overwhelmed. And I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget you also saying something to the effect of the experience you have making a movie like this will often be better than the movie itself. And kind of wanting, mm. wanting you to take <laughs> note of what we, the, the, the opportunity, the, the moment in time that we were all having, yeah. just making sure that we understood that. <laughs> The journey yeah, is the thing, yeah. right? Or, or, or just like, you know, yeah, the movie's kind of, like, I liked the, the analogy of a snake shedding its its skin to grow, you know, and so the movie is kind of like the snake skin. Mm. But like what we're doing now, this is the real yeah. shit. And the pre- preparation for the snake skin, you know, that's the shit, the hang, you know, that mm. experience, that's what makes the final Thing at the end of the other thing you know i mean as i watched i only watched the first half i haven't didn't watch the whole sinking of the ship in the courtroom and all that but as i watch it uh it's like watching dailies i'm watching my own performance of course i think no no no, no, no. i'm thinking of all the tweaks very hard to watch yeah. it with any kind of objectivity so that never ends yeah you took a lot, a lot of responsibility for us though i remember it was south carolina i was i was still regretting not being able to show up at a scene the way I wanted. And I saw you on the dance floor and I was like, yeah, I'm still, I can't let the scene go. And you and you said, yeah, I've been thinking about that too. I wished I could have helped you there. I was hoping uh, you'd say, oh no, you did it, amazing. <laughs> but did. but, uh, but it was, uh, yes! I was like, damn, Jeff was living with my own, like- uh, Yeah, well, like, that's, you know, that's the thing. That's kind of the wonderful uh, FESBO uh, fraternity sorority that we're in, right? Yeah. We all, you know, I love that aspect of making movies. You know, you're there to make something beautiful. You might philosophically and politically and everything you might be on, but you're all working together to pull this thing off. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love the kind of the urgency, like let's get close so we can work and be loose with each other as quickly as possible. You know what I mean? 
I learned work ethic from you and from Ridley because I remember I'd be sleeping down in the, you know, the bottom floor of the boat for six hours. I'd wake up and ready to complain to somebody. And there's Ridley hanging off the side of the boat, operating the camera. And there's you, you know, on your 12th hour, you know, working your ass off. And I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I got it. I, I can't say I can't say shit. Yeah. This is what it is. This is what it is. Yeah. Over the years, people say, well, who's, who's, who, who is your favorite person you've ever worked with, this kind of thing. And every time I've talked about you, and the thing that I felt like when we were working with you was there was just this, um, you did take care of us, but just by being uh, who you are, and there's something just so beautifully fluid, um, the way you arrive, you know, uh, I think as a bunch of knucklehead young actors, you know, I think we all had these kind of fixed ideas about, oh, this gotta, this has to go this way. And oh, I, I know this is this. I flied on the wall of a scene with you and Caroline when you were doing a dance scene. And I just kind of hid out in the corner and I watched. And I asked if I could have lunch with you after. And we sat and I said, you know, it seemed like th they had different ideas about that scene than you did. And, and you said, yeah, it's, I, I think that is not inaccurate. And I said, well, it was amazing to me how you just kind of like water just went with what that idea that came up and and you just said look you know why how do i know my, the idea in my head is yeah. is going to be the best idea yeah yeah you know and That's so that cool. idea of just staying open and fluid and free is something that yeah you know i was lucky enough to see you the other night and get a chance to tell you how much i love and appreciate I really, you and i, I, I that, i've i've aspired to that yeah, throughout my, my well, career. Well, you know, part of, part of that, as far as that gift from me to you on that, is that gift that I've received early on in my career. I remember my, I think it was my second film called The Yin and Yang of Mr. Go, and written and produced and starring Burgess Meredith, you know, the penguin from the Batman. Oh, wow. oh Mickey. And James Mason, right? <laughs> And, you know, I don't know if you guys know who James Mason is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was in awe of this guy, you know, and he went out of his way to just say, no, I'm just a guy like you. all oh, good. And he loosened up immediately. And, oh, God, I love that feeling. It's so wonderful to jam with uh, artists, man. God, it's such a well, Jeff, you had your, and, you and had your dad time, also, and my and my dad and my brother yeah. too. I kind of grew up in that thing early. I mean, as an adult, when you know, I did two movies, uh, Tucker and uh, Blown Away with my dad as an adult, and that was cool to pretend that deeply with your old man and play like that. That was, you know, really. Uh, and really, fabulous really Baker wonderful. Boys with your bro. That oh was yeah, those are those are the guys. But you know, you guys are you're just on the verge of being the old guys. So so you'll pass that <laughs> gift on. You must have done that in your careers, right? I mean, guys that are the next gen down, and you you know say, hey, you know, it's okay. It's just you know, as my mother would say, as I would go off to work as a young actor, you know, Jeff, Jeff, man. I said, what you do? Remember, have fun. And don't take it too seriously. Oh, fuck. That's good, good advice. advice. I, I tell my kids that all the time. It brings to mind um, brother uh, Kevin Bacon doing a movie with him, R.I.P.D., and it's a big action scene. And it's, you know, there's a lot of tension and lines have to be, you know, it's an important scene in the movie. And there's quite a few guys. I think Ryan Reynolds is in, in the scene, too. And, and, uh, and Bacon calls us on in a circle. He brings us in a circle and he goes, now remember, everything depends on this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a beautiful oh. tone because for me, it had a lot of spin on it because you, of course, it's, you see how ridiculous it is. But at the same time, no, every right this, where is my, where is my heart and my head right at this moment, man, you know? And humor is such a wonderful grease to make all that, you know, that happen. And then the big thing is to uh, do what we're doing right now. That's the high, the kindling of the spirit, you know, and getting up with guys who you've jammed with before and keep that creative energy. 
It'd be, oh, be exciting. One of these days yeah. we could all be together in person, you know, have have a big yeah, man. Together. I'd love love to see all of you guys in person. Wouldn't Mr. that be Hella. great? That would I'll be get us. I'll, I'll I'll start a group chat so we can all be in touch. But... Start a group chat. Let's try to see each other this year, guys. Good deal. Yeah. So your, your your philosophy and and everything has been so inspiring to all of us. I know everyone's already said this, but man, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Jeff. Thank you, you really led by example. Everything that you were talking about, have fun. You gave yeah. that to us. Good, man. Yeah. Thank you, Captain. All thank right. You, David. All right. Love, love you guys. Awesome. You guys. Thank, thank you, you guys. so much. Thank you yeah. all. Good to see everybody. Amazing, amazing. Bye. All right. Bye, Bye. guys. Wow. How sick was that? David, <laughs> I mean, are you dying? That was like. I could have done that for three more hours. I know, I know. And I didn't even have the experience that you had with all of them and hearing you all. And, and But boy, was that brilliant. And how incredible is Jeff? Like, I, I mean, you know, I wanted to cry partway through. I like, know, really. He's... He loves what he does. Like, yeah. he loves you guys. And the fact that he came on and gave, he was I so know. generous with his time. Seriously. I, I love that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for for you know being uh, the audience's POV, you know, and and asking your questions. But um, yeah, I, think I, I just sat back, sort of gobsmacked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every head. listen, we could have done an hour with each one of them separately, totally. you know. Absolutely. But uh, and then Scott came on late, and so I wanted to get him in. Um, but you know, when the, when people ask me about Jeff Bridges, you know. The character of the dude in in Lebowski, that's who he is. That's who he is. He How is. How many times did he go, man? Dude, he's an I old mean, hippie. Like, give him a guitar and a joint and he's happy. I don't think there's anyone cooler. I think it's just official. And that was the coolest. Like, I don't think we can top that episode. However, however, yes. we've got a good episode next week. What do we got? Shall I tease? We've Please. got uh we've got someone named Ben Stiller. Oh join us. no! We've got Ben Stiller joining us uh, next week, and it'll be our first one two on one interview. David, are you just we've, trying we've to like it. one up me? I get you, Jeff Bridges. You get me, De Ben Stiller. <laughs> Nothing can one up that group. That was fantastic. Um, and I'm so proud of you. And I love the movie, as I said. And like, how cool that we get to do this. So, um. It really, I love, I love working with you and this show is so much fun. I hope the audience appreciates this show and Ben Stiller is going to be phenomenal next week. I can't wait. I have so much Tune to ask in him. next week. Yes. All right. All yeah. right, everybody. Have a great week, you guys. Thanks for listening. Make sure to subscribe and give us five stars. And please follow us on Instagram at Hey Dude, the 90s called. See you next time.